from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the Tom Likas Show. Listen, fellas, I want more money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. The worst day on Wall Street in seven years. The Dow Jones average down 504 points. What does it mean to you? A lot. Oh, it doesn't seem like it now. Wait till later when you try to lease or buy a car. And you can't get a lease or you can't get a loan. Will you try to get uh, a mortgage? You know, you've been waiting all this time for real estate prices to come down and then they do. And you find the perfect house. And then you find out you have to put 25 or 30 percent down or that you can't even get a mortgage because your FICO score is below 700. You just can't get a mortgage no matter, for, no matter what the price, at any price. Will you get laid off your job? This is when you're going to find out whether you should have gotten more education or whether it was a good idea to lollygag around, smoke weed in community college. Now you're going to find out that wasn't such a good idea. So I thought, um, well, we could simply ignore this or we could talk about it. And that's what we're doing. And by the way, very telling. Every caller is male. Every single caller. Every one. No females. None. It's all guys. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Okay. I uh, got a quick question. I, uh, my brother, sister, and I, our grandparents put trust funds in Merrill Lynch. Back in 86. Mine's about to mature when I'm 25. I'm 23 right now. It's going to mature to 120,000. Um, what's going to happen to that? Well, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm Correct. not a professional. Um, so you'd be wise to run this past a financial professional. Okay. Cause my, my guess, and I'm guessing, is that uh, because Merrill Lynch is being bought by Bank of America, that everything's going to be intact. But keep in mind uh, that those trust funds are not insured. Right. It's not like a bank account. Right. So um, if I were you, I would invest in a one-hour meeting with a certified financial planner, which you can find by Googling. Go in and uh, show them what you got. And ask that very same question and get the answer from a competent, qualified professional. But my first guess is because Merrill Lynch didn't go bankrupt, they were simply bought before anything happened, um, that you should be okay. But don't take my word for it. No, because my mom went in today and she spoke to her financial advisor, and she's the trustees of all three of the accounts. And he's telling her that to take them all out, and there's going to be a huge hit, but... To take them all out. I well, I w believe me, if I were you, I would go with the advice of a certified financial planner, a financial advisor, somebody who's licensed and registered. I would go with yeah. them. And there are certified professionals, and uh, if that's what a certified professional recommended. Now, keep in mind, and make sure of this, sometimes these uh, so-called professionals are actually selling their own services. For example... I would not trust this guy's advice if he said, take it out of Merrill Lynch, and here, I'll take care of it for you. Right. Did he no. say that? No. What, what was said was that, because my mom can transfer, I don't know how it works, so I've never done it, I've never touched the account, that she can get the money, and then we can, I can personally have it, but it's going to be a huge hit, like taking money out. 
Like, it's, I think it's, like, because I get the big old Merrill Lynch statements, and, like, I think it's, like, at 114-something right now. But I would only see, like, 80 of it. Because you're taking it out early. Right. Right. Well, that's it. I'd get a second opinion on that for sure. Because, um... I was hearing today that Bank of America will probably continue calling it Merrill Lynch, that they won't change the name to Bank of America Securities or something like that. They'll continue calling it Merrill Lynch. It'll continue to be Merrill Lynch. It'll just be owned by Bank of America. Okay. Bank of America at one time owned Charles Schwab, for example. Charles Schwab bought his name and his company back from Bank of America years later. But uh, I'm, again, I'm guessing, but I would get the opinion of more than one pro because I, I don't know if... If you need to take a sixty thousand dollar or forty thousand dollar hit, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily so. Right. I, I run that by one other person. Or have your mom do that. I will. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Here comes Larry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh God, Tom. What a day. What a day. And I'll tell you three words. Ignorance is bliss. I mean, a lot of your callers that don't realize the ramifications of what happened today and what's going to happen this week, it is going to become a freaking nightmare down the line. And just to put things into perspective, for people that don't pay attention, don't pick up a paper, I would go crazy if I had to take these calls all day long from people who are going to call you, and God bless them, but ask you, am I going to Indy Mac? Am I going to have a job? What am I going to do with my $1,000 and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? I mean, what kind of advice is that? I mean, they should get Investing for Dummies 101 and just start from scratch. But when you, when you think about what happened in the market today, Lehman Brothers, 158 years old, they survived two world wars and the Great Depression. I mean, this was a tremendous company. Bear Stearns collapsing. Merrill, which you are right, they are going to keep the name Merrill Lynch, um, but it's it, it's going to trickle down, and like you said, it's going to come down to even more than just just getting a mortgage or getting a car loan. You know, I, I, I'm an actor. I got an actress friend that sits up at the coffee bean with me. I manage my own hedge fund. I'm very heavy in the market. I swing trade. I've got my bills covered, and I've got a year's worth of living expenses because the way things are today, God only knows what's going to happen. It could take you a year to find another job, let alone six months. But, you know, she had she took, took out one of these liar loans, got a house. She took out a loan to do some home improvements, didn't read the fine print. The bank recalled her loan. They have the right to take that money back, and now she's sitting with a yard that's dug up, and she owes her contractor $80,000. I mean, it could trickle down so far. You know, when, when you look at the cost of gas, people don't realize that trucks are the things that move all the commodities across the country. So when you go buy a bag of chips at 7-Eleven, it's going to cost you more to get in there. It's just, it's insane. And I, I just, I just don't think that enough people out there really have a knowledge of how it's going to directly affect their pocketbooks. Hewlett Packard said they were going to lay off 24,000 people today. I mean, it, it's, a, it's an insane world. It really is. It's an insane world, and the reason it's going to be insane is because the average person is asleep right now and has no idea what this means. If you turned on CNBC, I didn't mean to cut you off, but if you turned on CNBC today and you saw the reaction of, of the people, the Jim Cramers and the Dylan Riddigans and the people that know this business and the look of shock on their face of this drop of what happened today. And listen, I hate to say it, I'm one of your favorite people. I'm a Jewish New Yorker living in L.A. So this is about as good as Kristallnacht for me, 500-point <laughs> drop. It's, it's horrible. But, I mean, the look on their face, and, and what they don't realize is tomorrow, if AIG doesn't lock in their financing, AIG, they have insurance on so many of these loans. And, and what's really weird is that if, if the ratings are cut on AIG, it will automatically signal sell triggers that are, are electronically done, which could just rock the market. It could just totally have such a ramification that it, really nobody is prepared for. Doesn't, a, doesn't AIG also insure the bond offerings of various companies? That, so that's, it's, that, that's, that's what they exactly do, right? 
what, 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 in, a, in a nutshell, what it is is that these investment bankers, and that's exactly right, if you can imagine that for every dollar they have, they borrowed $30 to make loans and whatever, like the Lehman Brothers and the Goldman Brothers, and then what happens is that for that every dollar that they, that they, that they have, they borrowed 30 against it. They lent it out on these risky tier three, these high, these high risk mortgage investments, and then their, this money gets called, and they're asking for, you know, they want their money back, but they have insurance now in case they can't pay, and their insurance is through a company exactly like AIG. So now somebody like, like Lehman goes under, and now AIG that is going to be covering you know, insurance for Lehman is going to turn around and be hit with these and in, 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 in top of what's going on with Ike. Now they're going to be expected to make these huge payments. So if they can't have the capital to make that, it, the, ram- the trickle-down ramification is insane. And then, I mean, I don't want to get too in-depth with this, but if you look at somebody like Wells Fargo after trading today, Wells Fargo's done very well because they, they were very, very conservative in the way they lent money and weren't really exposed in bad mortgages. But guess what? Wells Fargo, whose stock was trading about 31 35 had a lot of loans out with they, they had a lot of money that was owned by Lehman and now Lehman is gone and they're now exposing a hundred a hundred billion dollars that they are going to be owed and it, it just it just the effects there's no transparency in, in these companies and that's the problem it just goes deeper from like Enron there's no transparencies nobody knows like you said what the actual value of real estate is nobody actually knows what the actual value of these companies are so it's 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 a real turbulent time. It's it's a uh, it's a, a real life changing time for a lot of people, and um, you know it's just insane. It really is crazy. You got to pick up a paper and and uh, and and read the um, read what's going on. Yeah, well, I don't want the listeners to find out. You know, one day when they you know they go to apply for a car loan and they can't get one, or they find the house of their dreams, they find out they can't get a mortgage, and these are the kinds of things that are going to be happening. This is what the average listener doesn't understand. And it's going to affect every aspect of your life. Everything. 1-800-5800-TOM. I can't believe this is our first female caller. Stephanie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Daddy. Not only am I chick, but I'm not fat or fugly, and I really care. I'm very concerned about what's going on right now. I've been concerned for a while, but this just me out today. Um, my husband and I, sorry, I'm married, but my husband and I have, um, a little over a hundred K in our checking account alone and a little less than a hundred K in our savings. No debt whatsoever. Uh, we rent, no car payments, um, no credit card payments, no student loans or anything. And we don't know what we should do in terms of taking money out of the bank, where we should put it. We don't trust anything right now. So what's your advice? Well, uh, first of all, uh, you do uh, you do know that your bank is insured by the FDIC, right? Yes. Okay. And you have paid off all your bills? Every single one. So you owe zero? Uh, zero dollars and zero cents. Okay. And you have money out of that 100000 yes. I'm assuming, yes. uh, to cover twelve uh, six months minimum of living expenses in case you lose your job? Absolutely. Both of us, yes. All right, so what are your living expenses? Um, $2,900 in rent, um, about, we just estimate 1000 a month between gas and groceries. We don't really go out too much, um, and we don't buy stupid things like clothes or anything like that. So we don't spend frivolously. So, so you have no car payments? No, no car payments. No insurance payments? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, insurance com- comes out through our work paycheck, so I'm not really sure if that oh, counts. Do you have car insurance? Yes, of course. Who pays for that? Um, we do. <laughs> You're oh. right. I'm sorry. All right. How about utilities? Um, we have gas and electric for our rent that's covered, so we just pay for direct TV and, you know, Internet. Cell phone. Cell phone as well. That's about 120 a month combined. All right, but they say. All right, I'm not thinking like that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It does add up. But you need to see. You fun. need to see. See what I just proved to you. You need to write down everything you spend in a month. Mm-hmm. Multiply that number by six. Mm-hmm. And that's the amount you have to have put in an account where it's easily reachable. Okay. For the purposes of emergency spending. In mm-hmm. case you or your man lose your gig. Okay. Which is a real possibility 
the way things are going. Oh yeah, and we're we're both in the entertainment business, so we're we're really freaked out more so than well, you know if we had a bank job or something. If, if you're in the entertainment, but are you actors or something? No, uh, we're both producers. Producers, I'd say have twelve months. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. What if there's a what if the, what if there's a Screen Actors Guild strike? Exactly. Where are you going to be then? Unemployed, out of work because of that. And do you fund your own business? Uh, no, we don't. We both work for um, networks. Okay. But you know how that business is going right now. Exactly. In the tubes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know we're all around it. So, yeah. in other words, you you don't have 100000 to invest. At best, you have 50000 to invest. Right. Right? Yeah. And because, because of the kind of business you're in, maybe you have nothing to invest. Maybe you just have emergency funding. I see the, I see the reality, yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. On top of that, don't be planning on making any big purchases or commitments of any kind. Right. You, you, you plan on driving that car you've got and maintaining it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the place you're living now, hope you like it. Love it. <laughs> Good. Because that's where you're going to be living for a while. Yeah. I mean, that you really have to lower your expectations. Mm hmm And, uh, don't be thinking that you're going to go out and make this money back, uh, playing craps at the Wall Street roulette table. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because there's people a lot smarter than you who are losing their shirts right now. Yeah. It's a good time for you to just not incur any new debt, not buy crap you don't need, cut out the crap that you do buy that you don't need, Starbucks. We don't, we don't even go near Starbucks or Pinkberry or any of that stuff. We're far away from those places. Good. All right. So you you pretty much are doing what you should be doing. Okay. All right. But, but most importantly, make a list of what you're spending. Find mm -hmm. out how much that number is. And my recommendation to you, see where you can cut. Do you uh, think we're going into a depression, like a major depression, or just your opinion, or do you think it's just going to be kind of sucky for a while? Well, uh, <laughs> I'd be the last one to try to call a depression because uh, we've had recessions, we've had wars. Uh, we, boy, we got all of it at one time now. Um, but uh, there's only been... One depression in the last hundred years, it was 1929 to 33 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have a stock market crash in 1987, but it was not followed with a depression. So um, th the thing is, though, that we have had long periods of recession, high inflation, high unemployment. Uh, going back, for example, to years like 1979 and 1980. It was horrible. Do you know That's how much? Born, yeah. Now, do you know how much uh, interest you could get on a money market account back then? Sixteen percent. Oh. But uh, <laughs> uh, the inflation rate was huge. The unemployment rate was huge. And the price of a gallon of gasoline at the time was the highest we ever knew. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of similar to that time in my eyes. And so my, having lived through it, my recommendation to you is just be sure to live in the most frugal manner you can. Thank you. That's the best advice I can give you. Thank you, Daddy. Darling, I'm always here even in time of need. You have to understand that. Tom like it. Who's that? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. philosophy and everything, man. You're the master. You're not father. You're the master. The Tom Like it Show. <laughs> The Tom Like It Show. Dow Jones averaged out 508 points today. All oh, yeah, not a point of the year, right? <laughs> How does that affect you? Well, that's what we're here talking about. At 1-800-5-800-TOM. Jimmy, in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Let me try it again. Jimmy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How's it going? There we go. Oh, it's going okay. Great. 
Hey, um, right now I'm uh, renting a house and uh, I'm kind of working in negotiations to buy it from the landlords. Um, we're kind of set to move ahead um, with negotiating with them further on the price, but uh, we've gone to our credit union stuff and have, have worked on uh, getting the loan worked out and everything. We're approved for that, but I think that we might not have enough to totally cover it, and I have an account in a credit union back east that uh, I was thinking of maybe going for a, a loan from, and what Would kind of account that? is that? Wait, wait, wait. Is that a 401k you have? What's that? What kind of account do you have back east? What kind of account is that? Uh, just, I mean, a checking account in another in another credit union. Why would you need to take a loan against it? Why couldn't you just take the money? Um, well, I'm just not sure that we're going to have enough money with the current credit union that we're in. Let me ask so you a question, Jimmy. Um, so you're telling me you're spending every penny to buy this place? Uh, we will be, yeah. How are you going to afford to maintain it? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Maybe you need to think about whether you can afford to maintain a home. You mean on top of just, you know, getting, you know, the covering the closing costs and everything else? Yeah, when the toilet overflows, can you afford to pay the plumber 80 bucks to come fix it? Oh, well, I I mean, I would do that myself, so. Uh-huh. How about stuff I'm, you can't do yourself? Are you an electrician, too? Uh, actually, all the electrician, I mean, all the electricity and plumbing and everything is pretty much brand new to when we moved in a couple years doesn't ago. Mean, doesn't mean anything. Also, uh, the roof. Uh, a roof can go every five years. What if the roof leaks? Can you uh, repair it yourself? So what are you saying? I'm saying you haven't figured out the cost of owning a home. And the cost yeah. is much more than buying the home. So if, if how much are the buy... pro how much are the property taxes? Um, it's a little under two grand. Two grand a year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you figured that in? Yeah. Is yeah, that going to be paid out of the mortgage payment, or are you going to be paying that uh, out of yeah. your pocket? Yeah, no, that's all together. So, I mean, you know, if we were to buy this place for, you know, two fifty, um, you know, that's that's going beyond our means. It would have to be under that. But wait a minute. And, and so all your, you know how much your insurance costs and everything? Yeah. So you've got homeowner's insurance, fire insurance? Yeah. All calculated? Yep. So how much is your mortgage payment? Um, well, I mean, if we topped it out around two forty, uh, to, if we bought the house for two forty, then and how much? The yeah, what percentage are you putting down? Uh, we would be putting down close to ten. Ten percent. Yeah. Are you paying PMI the mortgage insurance? Uh, I don't think so. I've that's the first time I've heard of that. Maybe you ought to ask. Well, this first time I heard, so yeah. It just sounds to me, if you have to borrow money from yourself, it sounds to me like uh, like maybe you're just going to barely be able to scrape by. Right. Well, we've, that's why we've been looking at, you know, even places that are, that are below. It's like below what we can afford for this place because we, we probably won't be able to buy this place, but we would like to because it's in a great location and it's comfortable and everything else, so. What kind of job do you have? Uh, myself, I'm uh, working for a brewery. Now that could go out in a New York minute. <laughs> That's true, but as long as keep, people keep drinking, I guess you know. I'm a good yeah, kid. but but let's let's face it: uh, people keep drinking. Uh, people keep drinking when they drink. They drink the cheapest beer around. Uh, not in this town. I mean, they do, but, you know, son, I, know you have you, not, I know what you're saying. Son, you have not been in Portland uh, during bad times. That's true. That's true. You know, uh, Portland, many of the great things about Portland, like all those microbreweries. Yeah. That's all a product of the 80s and the 90s when the economy in most of that time was fantastic. But uh, you haven't been there when Portland has faced hard times. Well, I mean, I mean, are you saying that Port Portland is headed towards hard times? Because I mean, the I'm saying that 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 everybody is going to have a harder time than they're having today. 
Okay. And that means that unless you've got a job that required an education, nobody is safe. Right. Now that's even, now that's, are you taking into account like my wife's income, like that we have a dual income? What does she do? Uh, she's a manager at a, uh, for a photography studio. All right, again, she, this is not a job that required advanced degrees or advanced education, right? Well, she has the degree for it, but no, not necessarily. Right. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to keep, <laughs> you need to keep your, uh, uh, your powder dry, as they say. You need to stop spending what you don't have, avoid making commitments that you can't afford to make, and you need to have at least six months of emergency funds stashed away in case either or both of you lose your jobs. Right. Do you have that? Um, six months, maybe, maybe close to that, but no, not not as much as we should have. I'm. I and are fully... you taking that? Are you taking that money to buy the house? No, no, we have a separate like nest egg for that. So. And you understand that your monthly expenses are going to be different when you buy a house than they are today. Oh, of have you course. adjusted? Have you adjusted your nest egg uh, for the possibility you're going to be paying a mortgage, property taxes, fire, and homeowners insurance? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're no, going to that's be paying all... maintenance. Yeah, I mean that's all. That's in. That's all included in. So all I right. mean. I. I'm, I'm telling you, do not leverage yourself to the hilt to buy a house. So you're saying say, to, to buy what I can afford, basically, is what I've been hearing from everyone else. Or less. Or less. In the, in the hopes of maybe turning that house over, like, in the future? Oh, don't or? even start with that. The house you buy, you better be planning on living in at a minimum of five years. Oh, yeah. I mean, at least. Yeah. At least. Okay. And there's no guarantee you'll make any profit at the end of selling it. Right. Keep in mind, the house has to appreciate 6% merely to break even. Do you know why? Uh, because of inflation? Nope. Well, because you have to pay the realtor. Well, that, that's the thing, is that on this... Oh, you mean when we sell it? Because when you sell be, it. We'd be buying... Okay, I see what you're saying, yeah. So right. you understand, the likelihood of you making a profit on your own residence is minimal. Right. So don't even be talking about it because it's just not in the cards. Okay. Well, So I, I, if you buy a house, it has to be the love of your life, the place you will love living for many, many years. There are no starter houses anymore. There is no, oh, we'll buy this one, and then in two years we'll move to another one. Those days are over. That's all they. That's all they seem to sell in in Portland, at least in the areas that we're looking for, are starter homes that need like a lot of fixing up, and they're asking way too much for them. No, but when I say a starter home, I'm referring to starter homes in the sense that there are people who say, "Well, we're going to buy this house, but then we're going to sell it, and we're going to buy another house in two years." Oh no, we're not. We're not intending on flipping anything. Well, <laughs> flipping would be less than two years. Flipping would be six months. Yeah, but this is the next five years of your life. Right. Imagine yourself in that house five years from now. With the same jobs that we have and, the, and making the same amount of money that we make? Is that what you or mean? Or worse yet, what if you lose a job? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, it's just... That's how you have to look at it at a time like this. Yeah. Well, we're definitely at the beginning phases of it, so I wanted to uh, thank you for your help. And I uh, was wondering if you could take me out Snoop style. Snoop style. I certainly can. Biatch. <laughs> there you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The Dow Jones average went down 508 points today. What does that mean to you? That's what we're talking about. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like I'm a long time listener. My dad listens to you. My brother listens to you. Actually, my whole family of men listen in at 3 p.m. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas here. Lee Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 508 points today. That is the worst performance since the first business day after 9 11, 2001. 
That's bad. And it's going to affect you. And that's what we're talking about here at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Let's say hello here to Valentina on the Tom Likas show. That's two women who've called in here. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I just wanted to comment on uh, what happened today. You know, um, I do pay attention to the financial markets, and I kind of figured, you know, today was going to be a bad day. I was watching earlier this morning, saw it down, you know, 250 points, and I was like, oh, you know, and then to find out later this. And I, th- I have to agree with you 100%. I do think that it is going to get worse. And judging by your callers, it doesn't seem like they even understand what FDIC is. It is kind of scary. Not, not uh, to mention the fact that I don't think the average person knows that this is going to affect them. It's not just going to affect the people who work on Wall Street or the people who are stockbrokers. It's going to affect everybody. No, and you're totally right. And um, I kind of, and I know it's going to suck and it's going to be really hard for, you know, many of us. And I think that it, in some aspects it is very needed. Um, I'm not from this country and I do work in credit. My husband actually works in finance. And it amazes me how little people understand how credit works, how finance works. And, you know, people live way beyond their means here. Where I'm from, credit's not a big deal. Either you have the money, great. You know, you can buy whatever you want. You don't have the money, well, guess what? You're going to have to save. And um, you said earlier about, you know, having a great FICO score. And, you know, you better have a 700. You know, my husband's in finance, and he has people that have, you know, uh, FICO scores of 750 with 10% down, and they can't get deals bought. I mean, it's you have to... You have to have a really great A paper, and the banks are just raising, you know, the limit higher just because they don't have the money to lend it to people. Let me tell you something. I bought real estate this year, and mm-hmm. that's before the current crisis. And I needed what they call a super jumbo loan. I needed one that uh, exceeded the conforming limits uh, for an FHA loan. Right. And at the time, that at the time, now that's what seven hundred twenty nine thousand dollars. At the time, that was. You know, what, about $430,000 or something like that? Um, in order to get that loan, I had to put 25% down. Yeah. And I have a FICO score of 800 plus. 25%. That's so I can only imagine the average person who smoked his way through community college. Mm-hmm. How hard it's going to be for him to get a loan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard for people that have, you know, they have decent credit and they have money. I mean, I see people that have, you know, bankruptcies late and just the credit's atrocious and they don't understand. And in many ways, I feel like this is kind of needed to kind of put people back in their place. You know, the people of the Depression, you know, they, you know, they're more frugal. They live through harder times. They understand and they look at things very differently. And I think that we have kind of almost spun out of control and we need this in as horrible as that sounds, that, you know, it, it kind of has to happen. And hopefully, you know, uh, McCain's not going to win. I can only, I only fear more of what, you know, what's going to come of that if he's in charge. I was wondering if you heard today President Bush, what he said about the economy, if you heard his comments. Well, his comments are not that different from what we've heard in the past. That the, the, the economy is healthy. Everything is going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Well, Tom, I just want to say I love your show. Thanks so much. Can you take me out with a bong rip and a um, uh, Snoop Dogg? Yes. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The stock market down 508 points today. What does this mean for you, for God's sake? Ron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ron. Hi, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, like the last caller, I'm shocked actually about how important money is to so many people. I mean, to everybody, actually. It's probably the most important thing to every, to most people, yet people don't understand at all how it works, how credit works. And it's, you know, it's great that they're calling you to ask what they should do with their money. I mean, you've got a lot of great answers and you're giving some good advice. But they should really learn and research themselves. I mean, it's such an important thing to know, yet nobody knows anything about it. Most people don't know. And um, 
uh, like you gave uh, some advice to one caller who said that he went inside uh, Merrill Lynch to ask, and you gave him great advice. Go ask somebody else. Get a second opinion. Why don't people understand that? To get as many opinions as possible. You should do that about everything. Um, yeah, the opinion he got was troubling me. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't like that. You know, I was agreeing with you. I mean, I do not, I don't I'm not an expert on that, but I would think that, you know, since Bank of America is purchasing uh Merrill Lynch that everything will be fine. Um and on top of that, yeah, people don't understand FDIC that they should uh, you know, split up their money into accounts of $100,000 each so it's protected. But, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, just go ask one person. You don't know what that one person's motives may be if they're, getting, like you said, maybe making a commission off of whatever advice they give you. And uh, people just listen to the first person that they give them advice. And it's really not the smart way to handle your money or make a decision about anything in life. Absolutely. Um, I also want to talk about how um, I feel like this whole crisis that's going right now is obvious. I I didn't predict that today the stock market would fall 500 points. I did hear late news yesterday about how this was going to happen today, but um, it was going to be a really bad day. But this was coming. I've been telling everybody that would listen to me that, you know, they need to take their money out of the stock markets. I've been telling them for six, nine months now. I mean, if you who oh, there's smoke, there's fire. There's been bad news coming out from everywhere about our financial markets. And yet you have some people saying everything's fine, everything will be good. But you know what, though? All the signs are pointing towards things getting worse. So I don't know why people would be putting their money into the market right now. And um, I was reading something about how um, one uh, independent analyst group was saying that, and they were saying this in January, about that all the write-offs probably are going to total about $1 trillion. Well, right now, the cumulative um, total write-offs from all these companies are about $300 billion. That's only 33% of what's been predicted is going to be the write-off. So there's a lot more for the economy to fall. And it doesn't surprise me that, you know, right now the government is doing everything in their power to slow it down, to bleed it slowly, instead of, instead of, instead of just letting these companies fail, letting us just, you know, let it bottom out and let it then recover. They're bleeding it slowly. Um, they're really a lot of people are misleading, you know, you know everybody, and it's, it's really it's really too bad. Hang on a second, Ron Ali. What did you want to say here to Ron? I disagree because most of the problems we are facing right now is because of the war and high price of oil. The price of oil is falling. The war is about over. As soon as this administration gets kicked out and new Democrats come in, and uh, the thing is that everybody says the sky is falling. A lot of short sellers are selling stocks and uh, make the economy appear so bad. I think within 10 months or 18 months, we'll be pretty much like the way we were two years ago, three years ago, because interest rates are low, the oil is low, the economy is going to get going. People need food, people need the places to live, people are still going to drive, so... The economy is going to go. It's just a bunch of baloney. People are saying uh, things are going to get much worse. I don't think it's going to get much worse than it is right now. I disagree, Ali. Um, first of all, you're just pointing, everyone is just saying, you're not pointing the fundamentals. You're not pointing to numbers. You're pointing simply to the fact that things have to get better. And that's what people do. You know, when there's blood in the streets, that's when all the investors, all the buyers come in. But you know what, though? I don't think there's, you know, we've hit bottom. There's still, there's been so much speculation, if you look at the numbers, and so much um, appreciation of all, and overvaluation of assets that it just doesn't make sense. The numbers don't make sense. It's been a little bit. There's a lot more room to fall. You can't simply say just because it's come down a little bit, which to us right now it seems like a lot, it's still compared to, like, let's say 1997 numbers or even 2001 numbers, these are... The, uh, the appreciation, the overvaluation is crazy. We made tons of money since the, the uh, tech uh, boom um, and um, it, with the real estate boom and, the, you know, the credit boom. And, it's, you know, it's about time that the, uh, they correct themselves. I'm all sorry, these but if you, go, if you go to any other country, you think this place is overvaluation. You go to Europe, it's a lot worse than here. And the economy has been going. But... This is what my point is. United States is the biggest producer of food, industrial supply, and uh, technology to the rest of the world. If the dollar is weaker, the economy here really is going to take off because many countries in the world, they're going to be buying U.S. products. 
and that's going to move the production and uh, industrial uh, in the entire nation. So uh, I think by next year we will be in a much better position than we are right now. Unless the price of oil stays up above a hundred dollars, that's the only reason it would stay down. <laughs> All right, Ali, Ron, thank you for the calls. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Patrick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Yeah, I just want to interject a little bit on this uh, on this conversation here. Uh, yeah, we're we're definitely in. You know, we're definitely not seeing the bottom yet. Uh, in, until the banks can start realizing their, as the other caller mentioned, their tier three assets, and and start. Improving some of these short sales out here. I mean, we're we're kind of stuck in the middle. We're getting we're getting these short sales. Uh, we're getting offers on these short sales. We're able to uh, present these to the banks, but the banks they're just not buying them. Regardless whether I got an appraisal or two, three or four appraisals proving the value of that property, uh, the banks are just not budging. They they feel that their properties are worth more. They're just you know they're they are. They have a ceiling that is not being recognized, I guess you could say. I got a rebate on my property taxes in L.A. for this year, and now I'm getting a rebate in uh, Santa Barbara County on my new house. I suggest that all home buyers turn in their tax reassessments, because that is a definitely one way of, uh, of, of minimizing their monthly payments. No doubt about it. Patrick, thank you. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.